Gabby and I'm a wet and wet oil painter and today I'm going to talk a little bit about barns. So um, I'm going to go over some general shapes of barns, a little bit on how to draw them um, just to kind of get an idea of really what barns look like and then um, how to paint them. So let's get started right away. I'm going to bring you guys in um, nice and close so that we can get good views of what we're doing. So we're going to start there. Now a little bit about drawing buildings in general. If you have never done any perspective drawing, um, I suggest that you stop this video and you go look up some perspective drawing. So perspective drawing is basically having um, um, vanishing points, whether you have one single point or you have two points. Um, and those are the two I'm familiar, familiar with. I think there might be some other ones. Um, but perspective drawing is good because it gives you sort of a realistic view of what buildings look like when you're looking at them from sort of different directions. Uh, so just something to sort of keep in mind. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different styles of barns. Um, I'm going to draw them first. And then after I draw them, I'm going to show you guys how to paint them um, with a brush and um, how to paint them with a knife. So what I have is I have a ruler and I have a pencil. Now, if you're going to do any of this stuff with a pencil, make sure that you um, draw as lightly as you can. With that said, I'm going to draw as lightly as I can not. <laughs> because I want you guys to be able to see these barns as we work on them. So I'm going to do two styles of barns and um, I'm going to have different perspectives depending on where we're working. So we're going to work over here first. And the first style of barn that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very um, typical sort of what I would think of as a Minnesota barn because that's where I'm actually from. I'm from Minnesota. and. Um, we have sort of a couple types of barns that you see a lot of. I use the edge of my canvas for my vertical up and down lines and I just line my um, ruler up with it. Just something to keep in mind. Rulers are great for doing this because then you can sort of measure out how, you know, how big you want things to be. And it sort of gives you an idea of how big things are. So because this point is closer, I want this to be just a little bit taller. And it's also great for making straight lines. So I went through and I wrote down the names of these type of barns and I can't remember what they're called. It's terrible. Um, but this is just a sort of very typical barn. So this piece that we have here, let me get that lined up, it's just under three inches. So let's say one and a half is about our middle point. And I'm just gonna give myself some sort of points to work with. And then let's see here, one and a half. And then let's go there. So again, I'm just giving myself some sort of points. Now, when you're doing buildings, especially in wet and wet, don't think that they need to be perfect because they don't. Um, you know, and give yourself a little bit of grace with it, especially if it's something that's off in the distance, you're not gonna see it as um, detailed and that's okay. All right, so we're gonna put in these angles first. And once I get this going, you guys are gonna get a better idea of sort of where I'm going with this if you haven't caught on already, which I don't expect you to because I haven't really indicated where I'm going with this. I think I'm going to bring these lines up a little bit further. One of my biggest rules of thumb when it comes to doing any sort of buildings is look at them as you paint them. And if it looks like it's off to you, it's because it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. And all you have to do is just sort of adjust how things look. One little thing too with um, with drawing pencil lines, make sure that if you are drawing and then erasing anything, that you don't have your tray of paint sitting underneath you. I am notorious for doing that. And then I will get um, eraser shavings all over my paint and then I scrape them up and throw them away. It's just one of those little things. Okay. Now the great thing about oil paint is you can usually cover stuff like that up. We're going to take those lines that we put in and I'm just going to slide my ruler straight back. And then straight back. And then we'll line up these 
Now you'll see this line comes down a little bit more, this one a little bit more here. And that's what happens because depending on how you're looking at it, it's going to disappear off that direction. Now we'll take this back over here and I'm gonna put in a new line. And again, definitely, if you look at it and it doesn't look right, it's probably because it's not. Now you can do this specifically with putting up your um, perspective vanishing points and stuff like that. I'm not gonna get too much into this. If you're ever doing a project like this and it's um, for somebody from a photograph, what I do, and you can do whatever you want, but this is what I suggest. What I always do is, um, after sort of learning my lesson on this, is that I actually trace them from their photographs and it makes just a better barn altogether. And some people like to hate on the concept of tracing, but I think if it makes it better, then go for it. Okay, so this is sort of one of our very typical barns where they have um, a flatter roof and then it comes down and then it has these little sides. Let's see, over here, over here. Just make sure I have this sort of lined up. There we go. And that gives us a roof. Very simple to do. Um, I actually really like doing buildings because I feel like they are easy to do. When you have things that are, you know, in nature, I think they're more difficult to draw. Where when they're man-made things, they just tend to be easier to draw, at least for me. So what I'm putting in is I'm putting in the loft door thing. And a lot of times in old barns in Minnesota, you'll see where these doors have been left open and then, you know, the barns slowly sort of rot away, which kind of makes me cringe because I see these old barns and buildings falling to the ground all the time. And it just makes me wish that I could like go scoop them up and fix them before they just completely deteriorate. And again, I'm not keeping all of my angles exactly the same when I'm doing this. I'm taking it and slowly turning it. If I were to keep them all the same angle, it would make it look like um, I'm looking at it from a funny direction. I want it to look like I'm looking at it from the ground. Okay, so right down the middle here where I have those doors, there's these doors. And then the reinforcements on the doors. One cross. Two cross. And we have a barn. Very simple. Um, I'm going to move on to the other shape of barn that we're going to do. And then after I do that, then I'm going to come back and we'll look at painting them. All right, so let's get started with this other barn that we're going to do. I think I'm going to have my barn sort of face each other, kind of. And this is a different style of barn. I think I said that, but I thought I would clarify that again. It's about the halfway point. We'll do it in centimeters this time. It's about eight centimeters. We'll put a middle spot about there. And then I'm gonna bring that up to about here. And then let's remeasure this at eight. We'll do two. And two. Okay. All right. So I am going to give this thing. Let's see if I can bring this, this here. Oh, my neck is sore today, guys. Okay. So let's see. We have this, this. I think I went a little bit too crooked on that. So now I sort of have some points. And again, it, it is helpful to just sort of put little points in if you're drawing this stuff out. It just seems to help. Okay, 
those lines actually need to be there. And some of these lines need to be there and some of them don't. And that's where drawing more gently really does come in handy. And now, oops. There are many different types of barns, by the way. One barn that I'm not going to draw, but that is actually very common in Minnesota, a lot more common than the second barn I'm drawing, is like a Dutch barn. So they are basically shaped like a big, huge cabin. So if you ever want something simple to do, that's a simple thing to do. So we're going to come down a little bit. Like that. Like that. And that's sort of the shape of our barn. Obviously, we're going to finish putting the roof on here. So that line's there. That's there. We'll straighten that one out a little bit. Make it more straight. Gotta put in another line, which is going to be right here. All right, and then we'll take this angle, we'll bring it over, and there from there we'll go straight up, and then we'll grab this angle and we'll come over, and then we'll clean up the little bits of stuff that we need to clean up. You can put windows on your barns too. Um, windows, doors, weather vanes, those are just a few different things that you can put on your um, barns if you wanna do something that's just a little bit unique. And there we have the general shape of a barn. Bring you guys a little bit closer so you can get a little bit better view on what I'm working on, okay? very simple. And then these have doors. I'll just put in some general quick doors. And actually I should make these lines go up to the roof. Now if this had to be something a little bit more particular, I probably would be more particular on it, but as it's just a sort of exercise, I'm not too worried about it. parallel to these beams on the top and then right down the middle these barns too set, sort of have the same setup of doors as the other barn but then they have windows in different places And just like that, guys, we have another barn. So that's kind of fun. Um, so that's sort of the first part of this, and this will be done in three parts. But there's the first part of it. That is how to um, draw out barns, first of all. So until next time, guys, I'm Gabby. Thank you very much for watching. Um, questions, comments, put them in the comment section. If you guys could like, share, subscribe, that would be great. Until next time, um, I really do hope that you fall in love with oil painting just as much as I have. Bye, guys.
Thank you.